is really, I'm embarrassed because of how many times I've mentioned the Goldfinch and Donna Tart in this video. And Hello beautiful friends and fellow word lovers. Welcome back to Pocket of Poetry. So happy that you're here. Today's video is going to be the mid-year book freakout tag for 2021. I've seen this one all over booktube and I just really wanted to hop on the train. So hopefully if you don't know the mid-year book freakout tag is just kind of like a series of questions about the books that you've read so far in the year and also the books that you are anticipating reading for the rest of the year, so kind of a good mix of both. Um, so I'm just gonna jump into the questions now, and I have to say these questions were so hard to answer um, because there, I actually have read so many good books this year. Um, I've read, I counted today, and I've read a total of 36 books so far in 2021, which is great. My goal for the year was 50, and I'm already well over halfway to that, so I'll probably end up reading more than 50 this year, which is awesome. So. Anyways, I'm going to jump into the questions now. One is the best book that you have read this year so far. And I don't think that my answer to this is going to come as a surprise, but it is a book that I recently read and recently raved about in my last video, and that is The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. Um, I just, I've, I already talked about it a ton and like, I've actually talked about it in a few videos now, but I just adore Donna Tartt's writing and the Goldfinch, out of the two books of hers that I've read, is definitely my favorite because I just have such a soft spot in my heart for this book. I love it so, so much. Um, the writing is gorgeous, the story is heartbreaking and beautiful, the characters are great, and I love, I love the main character so much, and so just, yeah, basically, those are my, that's, I think that's my favorite book. I really did think about it though, because there were a lot of books that I loved that I've read this year, but I think... Goldfinch might have to be my very favorite, so. All right, question number two is, what is the best sequel that you've read this year? Um, for me, that is probably going to be Crooked Kingdom by Leigh Bardugo. I really loved the Six of Crows duology, um, and Crooked Kingdom was such a solid sequel. Like, really everything that a sequel should be, in my opinion. It continued the character's development well into the story. It created an intriguing, um central plot because a lot of the time with sequels the plot can kind of feel lacking because the first if the especially if the first one was really good and really high stakes it can be hard to create something that's that good and high stakes for the second book but Lee Bardugo did an excellent job of creating high stakes a super intriguing plot line continuing the character development and the relationship development and just basically giving us everything that we wanted th those of us that were fans of the first book and just adored the characters wanted. So question number three, what is a new release that you're really, really excited to read but haven't read yet? Um, my answer to this question is not a very original one at all. I'm sure that this is a book that, a release that pretty much everyone is excited for, um, but it is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid and I finally have it and I'm so happy. It just came in the mail like a couple days ago. I haven't started it yet. But I like can hardly wait because I've been seeing everybody's reactions and reviews online and I adore Taylor Jenkins Reid's storytelling so much like I think there I mean she's so popular on booktube and like on bookstagram and pretty much everywhere on the internet but I just love like there's such a reason for it also when you look at this cover does this not make you just want to go to the beach like right now like I just recently got back from a beach vacation and I already miss it so much and like seeing this cover just makes it even worse. Like it's just so happy and pretty and beachy and I love it so much. But anyway, I'm really excited. Not only is this exist in the same universe as the wonderful seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo, but it also follows a family of four siblings. And I absolutely love stories about siblings and family dynamics. I think they're so fascinating because family dynamics are obviously one of the most interesting things about human nature in my opinion and I think books that explore them are just so much fun so I'm really really excited for this oh I can't even tell you guys I'm so so excited <laughs> the question is what is your most anticipated release for the second half of the year and I thought about this for a while and I really honestly do not have one like I'm not the type of person who's really like into following current authors like really only since I started my booktube channel have I really started to get into like new releases and popular authors and things like that because I, I before that I wasn't really into like the online book world very much um, and generally the books that I'm excited to read and the books that I'm anticipating are books that are older 
books and books that have already been out for a while so I don't actually have like a new release that I'm currently anticipating coming out. Question is what was your biggest disappointment? This one was like so hard. I like thought about this for way too long um and I feel like I didn't really have too many disappointments which I'm really grateful for. I feel like I had a, a pretty good reading year to so far to where I haven't really had many disappointments. Um, I had a couple of books that I expected to be good and I was excited for and then ended up DNFing because I just hated them and those ones were probably my biggest disappointments. Um, as far as books that I actually completed reading, um, I didn't have too many disappointments but I will say that probably the one that disappointed me the most was Radio Silence by Alice Oseman because um, I was really excited to read this one because I'd heard a lot of good things about it but I ended up just not liking it very much at all. I just didn't enjoy the story. I wasn't that invested in like the characters. I, I don't know. I just wasn't a huge fan of it. Um, so as far as books that I finished, that was probably my biggest disappointment. But as far as books that I DNF'd, there were two of them. One of them was The Hourglass Factory, which I tried to read back in February. It was like a mystery slash historical fiction about the suffragette movement in London. And I thought it was going to be so good, but I ended up just hating the writing style, not connecting to the characters at all. And then same with these Violent Delights by Chloe Gong, which I tried to read last month in June, and I did talk about that in my June wrap up, but I also just really didn't like it. And it was, I know it's so popular and so many people love it, but I just was super, super bored by it and didn't like it at all, so I DNF'd. Um, so that was kind of a three part answer to a question, but I feel like those were probably my biggest disappointments, the ones that I DNF'd, because I just don't, like if I know that I'm really not liking a book and I can tell that I'm not gonna like it, and I, I can tell that it's not going to get better, then I will DNF it, so. Next question is, what was your biggest surprise? Like, book that you didn't really expect to like that much, but ended up loving? Um, for me, most of the books I picked up, I did expect to love, but one that I guess I will say surprised me was City of Bones by Cassandra Clare, and just that entire series, the entire Mortal Instruments series. Uh, shocked me with how much I loved it because I picked it up kind of on a whim I thought it would be fun to try out this popular fantasy series I've been seeing a lot of like posts about it on my Instagram like explore page and I was like intrigued by it so I decided to start reading and I will I like I kind of expected to not like it like I was pretty much 50 50 I was like maybe I'll like it and have fun maybe I'll think it's really stupid and I ended up actually loving and being obsessed with the Mortal Instruments series um, I spent like two months just reading <laughs> the Mortal Instruments and the Infernal Devices, which I loved even more. Um, but yeah, that whole series was definitely one that surprised me with how much I ended up loving it. Like I thought it was going to be fun. I thought it was going to be just kind of a fun, fluffy read and it was, but I also ended up just like loving the characters and just like, yeah, it was so good. So. That was one that for me was a bit of a surprise, but a pleasant one to be sure. Next question is, who is your favorite new or new to you author? Um, this one, again, not gonna come as a surprise, definitely Donna Tartt. I am obsessed with Donna Tartt and I never had read anything by her until this year. And so this year was the year that I really discovered her as an author. And I know, she, I think she only has ever published three books and now I've read two out of the three. Um, the other one isn't as popular. It's, I can't even remember what it's called. It's like our friend or our little friend something like that um so i i do want to read that one eventually just because i'm i just love donna tart and i'm like really interested to see how that book compares with her other two but anyways i just like am obsessed with her i think she's probably the greatest writer of our modern age um <laughs> that i've experienced anyway so the question is who's your newest fictional crush i like this question it's a fun one um i'm gonna go with i feel like i've i don't know i'm gonna go with Pretty much everyone from the Six of Crows duology. <laughs> I'm in love with all of them. No, actually, if I had to pick one out of that series, I would probably pick Matthias, which kind of surprises me a little bit that I ended up picking Matthias. Like, he's so pure. I just love him. And like, if I'm being completely honest, he kind of reminds me of my husband just a little bit. And so I think that's part of why I love him so much. I just think he's so, like, he's just so cute and like how he's kind of more of like the serious somber. He's such a stickler for rules, but then when he meets Nina, that all kind of changes. And I just, I think their whole relationship is, I think they're my favorite couple out of Six of Crows, um, which is really hard because I like all the couples, but I think they're my favorite just because I really like their, 
their dynamic and their story. So I would say I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Matthias Homer. Next question is my newest favorite character. So it's kind of hard. Um, I definitely have a lot. I definitely have a lot of really good characters. But I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys two different answers to this question because one of them is really I'm embarrassed because of how many times I've mentioned the Goldfinch and Donna Tart in this video and recently. But I just I just think he is so, I don't know. There's something about like broken characters, especially when you follow them from a young age, that just like tugs at my heartstrings and I just want to like be a mother to them. And I just think they're so, so cute and I just want to like, yeah. So that's how I feel about Theo. I just think he's just such a, just, I don't know. He's a terrible person, honestly, he really kind of is. But like, just knowing what he's gone through to bring him to that point. And then at the end, he kind of like, comes into a better version of himself, which you can really appreciate. But like, just the way that we follow him, the way that his story is told just made me like so attached to him. Um, and then the other character that I'm going to mention who's kind of a similar kind of character is um, from the book that I'm currently reading, which is East of Eden by John Steinbeck. And the character is Cal, um, Cal Trask from East of Eden. He's another character that you follow from a young age into kind of like adolescence and adulthood and you also um he also has a very tragic kind of past and backstory his mother isn't in his life at all and his father is super emotionally distant um and he kind of has these like natural tendencies of like towards like darkness and he's a little bit more of a dark and brooding character whereas his twin brother is kind of the opposite of him and he's just so sweet like there's this one scene in particular with cal when he's a little boy and he wants to like be a good person and fight like he anyway he's like praying like god please don't let me be mean and like i seriously was like crying during that scene and i love cal i just think he's so adorable so those two are probably my new my most recent like favorite characters that i just like love this question is a book that made me cry there were a few i've cried a few times over books this year um, but the one that stands out in my mind, perhaps most memorably, is Normal People by Sally Rooney. Because after I finished this book, I cried for probably almost an hour. Like, I have never cried that much over a book, I don't think, in my life. Like, there have definitely, like, I've definitely, usually if I'm crying over a book, I'm, like, tearing up a little bit just you know a little bit of a tear sometimes some tears will come out but like for the most part i'm not really like bawling but when i read normal people i was crying and crying and crying like i literally i was at work i finished the book and i had to take a break go outside and cry like that's what that's how bad it was and part of the reason i think why normal people made me cry so much is because of like the emotional state that i was in and the place that i was in at that time in my life because that was a couple of months ago that was back in february and I was definitely in a much more fragile emotional state then than I am now. And so that's part of the reason. But the other part of it was just what a vivid story it was and how sad and heartbreaking it was and how the characters, like how much they went through. It just, I don't know. And there was something about the way that it was written that made me genuinely feel like I was in the book. I had reached the point where it was like emotionally invested was an understatement. And so I think that's the reason why I cried so much at that book book that made me cry a lot i kind of want to mention this one as well because i definitely cried a lot in this one and that was the immortalists by chloe benjamin um i i was also at work when i finished this book and i also cried like <laughs> it was late in the day um i would i think i was staying late at work that day if i remember correctly and my co-worker was the only other person there and she left and as soon as she left like the tears just like it was like the dam broke and i just started bawling <laughs> and that book was hard heartbreaking but really really good so both of them were like I was way too invested and the immortalists it was kind of hard not to be invested because it was just so tragic it was such a tragic book um so yeah anyway those were the two that made me cry probably the most next question is a book that made me happy I also have two answers for this one I um, both of the books that I'm about to mention are books that gave me the same vibe so if you liked one of these books you'll probably like the other one um the first one is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab, and the second one is The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. Both of these books just made me so happy, you guys. Like, they were so, they were just beautiful escapes, beautiful, fantastical 
worlds that you could just escape into and they just made me so happy. The writing style, the sort of magical, fantastical elf like vibes, the description, the way that everything was just so pretty. Like neither of the books were books I feel like that were written to be taken very seriously. And I think both of them were books that were written, or at least this is how I interpreted it, were more of books that were written to just kind of be feel good sort of escapes. And that's how I felt about both of them and both of them made me extremely happy. Alright, the next question is what is the most beautiful book that you've either bought or received this year? And my answer to that one after much deliberation, because I did buy a lot of beautiful books, but after much deliberation my answer has to be On Her Knees by Brenda Marie Davies because I have a major obsession with the aesthetic of this cover. Like everything about this cover just speaks to my aesthetic so much. I love the colors, I love the font, I love how it looks, like it kind of gives me 70s vibes. It's that vintage sort of 70s look to it, like just the, the illustration and the font give me such like vintage vibes and I'm obsessed with it. Like, so you can't tell as well on camera, but it's sort of like an off-white cream color with this gold, with this green, just like the color scape of it. This is, this is truly my aesthetic. So yes, I love, love, love the cover of this book. Hey, last question. Finally, we're here. We've arrived. Um, last question is what book or books do you still need to read before the end of this year? Obviously, I have a ton of books that I still need to read and I plan to read so much more and I plan to continue this fun journey with you guys of talking about books and exploring and diving into new stories. But I wanted to share one book in particular that I recently purchased. I just wanted to show you guys. I was going to do like a full July TBR video, but then I decided to just do this video instead. Um, because my July TBR isn't really that exciting. I mean, it might change, it might evolve, but for right now, it's not that exciting. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys a, a book that I recently bought because I think it's so beautiful and I'm so excited to read this one. And it is The Death of Vivek OG by Akweke and Mezi. I probably butchered that, but it's so pretty, isn't it? And okay, so. The reason that I initially became interested in this book was because of Noelle Gallagher, because she's mentioned this book on her channel a few times and she absolutely loves it and thinks it's so beautiful. Um, and so I was I was intrigued by it from the first time I heard her mention it. But then when I went to Cape Cod, I was in a bookstore and I saw this book sitting there and I picked it up and it was like one of those experiences where you feel the energy of the book like vibrating towards you and it's like, pick me, pick me, you know? And that's how I felt about this book and it just had such a magical feeling like when I picked it up and held it. I wanted to buy it and take it home so bad, but I waited and I actually bought it on Amazon because I knew it was gonna be cheaper and I'm just, I can't bring myself to buy a book in a bookstore when I know I could get it cheaper on Amazon. Like I just have, I have a problem with doing that. So I bought it on Amazon, but I'm so excited to read this. It's so pretty and I know it's like, oh, um, it's a book about a young boy in Nigeria who experiences depression. I think he ends up committing suicide, but I could be completely wrong. But I know that he does obviously die because it's called The Death of Vivek Oji. Um, and it kind of explores his death and I guess how it affects the people around him. I could totally be making that up. Um, I did read the back, but I can't remember everything about it. So yeah, but anyways, I'm super excited to read this. It just looks so beautiful and I'm really excited to tell you guys my thoughts on it. Okay, thank you so much for watching my mid-year book breakout tag. That was so fun chatting with you guys about books. So I hope you really liked it. And if you do, please give this video a like and consider subscribing if you are in the mood to click the red button. Other than that, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.